Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. Uh, hope everybody who is taking this course is fine. And uh, I am sure the course is considering in contents the way it is being taught. Uh, people are really understanding the basic concepts of project management. And as I have, I have been already uh, informing over the, uh, the series of lectures for any queries, please let the TAs and the instructor which is me know through your forum, so that we will be able to take care of all the queries we uh, are able to answer based on what the candidates or the participants who have the course uh, have as the cross, cross progresses. So, this is uh, the tenth lecture um, uh, for this course in project management. And as we were discussing the capital asset pricing model and I told you in the last slide for the ninth lecture before we just wrapped up the ninth lecture that how the capital asset pricing model is related to the simple linear equation y is equal to mx plus c and how it can be derived very simply. So, it is basically a very simple concept of linear regression model where the assumptions which are there for linear regression would be in somewhat uh, in, in, in a different way, but the general concept remains the same would be extended for the CAPAM model. So, if we consider the few um, results, important results for the CAPAM model as applicable for investment or as applicable for a portfolio considering different sets of projects. So, you will see the overall beta. Now, beta if you remember we have um, uh, first encountered the concept of beta for a project or for an investment considering this is a type of risk. So, beta for the overall portfolio would be the sum of the multiplication of two terms. The first term is basically where the pencil is hovering is basically the weights or the total amount of investment which you are doing for project 1, project 2, project 3, so on and so forth considering there are n number of projects and uh, the value of beta i are the corresponding risks for the projects which are dependent on the so called market or some theoretical concept of the market which is there. So, that is given by a simple expected value sum and if, if I consider the, the concept of the overall risk of the portfolio or the project, it is given by the for each and every uh, item, item means each and every asset or each and every project which you have in the overall portfolio it consists of two terms. The first term is basically the risk which is dependent on the market multiplied with this, this sigma square m is the overall risk of the variance of the market multiplied by the square of the risk corresponding to each and every asset plus the overall risk of the white noise. So, obviously, for any project there would be variations. So, the variations would be basically coming from the external sources. So, it is basically consists of two parts. As just mentioned the first term which is in the second formula is the systematic risk that is the risk associated with the market or the overall portfolio or overall set of projects which is there. While the second term is the non-systematic risk which basically is coming from the market like if I am planning to build um, a bridge or a, a huge stadium or consider I am trying to build a, a oil rig platform in certain country or in a certain area of, of the sea and considering the, the, the political uncertainty is very high in that region. So, obviously, it will have a negative impact. So, the overall risk which is the, the non-systematic risk would be very high is or, or basically the non-systematic risk or as mentioned is the specific risk. The first risk cannot be diverse, diversified, but the second risk can be diversified and made as, as low as possible depending on how you invest. Similarly, for the portfolio if you consider 
the there there are two types of risk again for the portfolio extending from this first so called first formula and the second formula you have the overall risk of the portfolio which is now the multiplication portfolio means the conglomeration of assets or, or the projects which you have made so that is the multiplication of two terms again the market risk multiplied by the square of the beta of the pro, uh, the portfolio so this can be obtained from here so this is the formula which is given and and plus the overall um, um, the risk for or the white noise or the non systematic risk for each and every so called asset of the project multiplied by the square of the total quantum of investment which you are trying to make for that particular project now what are the assumptions of the capm so i'll just go one by one they are, they will consider there is no transaction costs that means when you are investing the transaction cost for buying and selling is zero which is may not be true in real practice assets of the projects are indefin infinitely divisible which also is a very theoretical norm but it generally serves our purpose for trying to utilize very simplistic formula for real life problems this absence of personal tax or some sort of tax is not there investors make decision based on the return and risk concept of the of the investment only this unlimited short selling is allowed short selling is the concept which we see in finance where you basically borrow projects or borrow financial instruments let me be very specific for the finance concept it is is basically borrowing a financial assets which you do not have and with the intention that once the time frame based on which you have basically borrowed the financial asset it would be returned back to the original owner along with the terms and conditions of say for example dividend or the price increase by decrease whatever it is is there would be paid back to the original owner this unlimited riskless lending and borrowing is allowed which means that you can borrow from the market which is the bank interest rate if you remember i have discussed about rf r suffix f uh riskless lending and borrowing is allowed that means you can go to the bank borrow and you can also go to the bank and lend that means put your money money in the bank investors or the people who are there in the projects define relevant period in exactly the same sense so this say for example if it is for one time period it will be considered the same for each and every people who are there in the investment process for the project investors had identical expectation with respect to the inputs to the portfolio or for the project decision so now this this identical expectation basically means the overall concept of utility now this is the first time i'm using the concept of utility that concept of utility would be the same for each and every individual so the overall utility functions uh, functional form would be same but the parameters may be different for the utility function and all the assets or all the projects are marketable such that you can buy and sell depending on or buy and sell means invest and come out on the project depending on how how the market is doing so the capm can be used as a pricing model for trying to find out whether you are making the right decision to find out on the investment process consider you have the initial investment value as p0 which is known and obviously the the future value pt is unknown to you so you have to basically find out then we immediately know that the first term which is there in the left hand side this one it basically this p bar suffix t is base is the actual expected value of the portfolio or the project or the investment at a certain time t after you have started your investment process while p0 as as discussed is the initial investment which is known so this value which you have this ratio is is the rate of return of your investment in that project that is equal to so this is basically ri ri bar say for example is equal to rf which is risk free interest rate plus the beta factor for that for the investment multiplied by the difference of the market and the um, the risk free interest now if you bring rf on to the left hand side so this is the exactly the model which you have already considered in the deterministic sense so thus p0 is given by um, uh, p bar t and the terms which it comes in the in the in the denominator 
basically it, it gives you some, some concept of discounted uh, rate of return. So, it is interesting to compare the second equation for the probabilistic case with the deterministic one. For the deterministic case, we have to discount the future payment at an interest rate R f using the factor which is 1 plus 1 by R f depending on the factor of discounting which you have. So, in the probabilistic sense, we have the equivalent factor given by this which I have already discussed is there in the, the denominator. So, the price of, of, of two assets or projects is basically a linear sum of these two assets or the projects or the prices which you have. So, say for example, if you have the price as of now for our project A or asset A or investment as A and that for asset B or investment B with a suffix B, then we will see the prices of the first one and the second one will be based on the exact formula which you have just derived. Now, what is interesting to note that the linearity of the price addition holds such that if you have P not suffix A, P not means the price of project A at time t is equal to 0 plus if you have basically P not suffix B which is the price of project B at time t is equal to 0 and, and, and such prices are given, then trying to find out the overall return or, or, or the price of those conglomeration of, of the of projects which you have at time t is equal to 0 is very simple. So, what you do is just add them. Now, if you want to find out the return would that would be based due to the fact that these values prices you would basically find out from the historical data some expected value and this R m minus R f is already fixed for each and every different investment which you have. So, only thing which you need to do which and which is very simple to find out is basically the overall beta which you have. So, the beta is basically sum of the betas for project A, project B, project C, whatever you have. So, again if I consider this is the discounted risk factor for the overall portfolio now. Now, portfolio is basically different type of small, small projects which you have individually it can be found out accordingly, where if it is the individual sense. In that case, you will basically have as I mentioned only the first price for say for example, for, for project A and the denominator which you have which is the discounted so called interest rate there in that case beta would be specific to the project and R m minus R f and R f remains as it is for different type of investment because that does not change market again is basically the overall conglomeration of all the projects which you have. Given an asset project with initial investment P0, the final return would be given considering Pt is unknown where the beta you can find out. So, if you look at the denominator and the numerator in this equation, the denominator is basically the market risk considering standard deviation or the variance is used. Standard deviation is the square root of that. And if you consider the numerator, this is very simply the covariance which exists between the rate of return for project A or B or whatever it is with respect to the market. So, what I am trying to find out or what is actually needed beta is basically the ratio of the covariance of that particular project with respect to the market divided by the overall risk of the market. Because if I try to find out the overall concept of the covariance of the market to itself, then obviously you know that for the covariance of the market to itself would technically be the variance because the correlation coefficient is basically 1 for, for any random variable with, with respect to itself. Then with the sim simple substitution, we have the value of P naught which is basically the price as I want to find it out is given by the difference of P t which is the value of the project's price expected value later on at some time t 0, t or t or t 1, t 2, t 3 and the again if you look at very carefully at the numerator and the denominator, the denominator remains as the market risk while the numerator is now basically the covariance which exists between the difference on the market and R f this second term and the market risk and the price values market risk means I am trying to basically find use the risk or the sorry 
the return of the market and the price corresponding to the project which is there based on that I try to find out the covariance. So, if, if, if I have a, 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 a very qualitative feel of this formula, it basically means that I am trying to find out what is the so called ratio between a particular investment or a project with the market divided by the overall risk of the market. The term in the bracket is known as the certainty equivalent which is value of Q and based on that a person can find out whether a certain project is going to give you positive returns or negative returns. Because if, if considered if P bar T is, is positive or negative that would basically have a, a positive and negative impact on the overall term which is there inside the square bracket. A firm can use CAPAM model as the basis for deciding which projects it should carry or execute or invest. Suppose you have a project with an initial investment of P naught which as I mentioned uh, in, in the last two slides is known before and because you are trying to invest and suppose the final price P t at whatever time period it is is unknown then the net present value, net present value is basically considered the expected value of the overall project as of now is given by the difference of two terms. This P naught is minus because that is the overall outflow of money from my pocket considering I am investing. And the second term which you have is basically the value of the project depending on the price which I expect at time t is equal to t. So, this value if it is positive and more than the value of, of, of P naught, P naught is now is negative because that is outflow of from my pocket. If the net formation value is positive which means that I will definitely invest in that project. Now, the second question would be that if I have different type of projects, how should I basically base my overall decision? It is very simple. You base, you rank them from the highest to the lowest, whether topmost value is the net present value is maximum positive sense and the lowest value would be uh, net present value maximum in the negative sense, rank them and choose the one which gives you the maximum benefit. Now, if there are two different projects with the same net present value, then what do you do? Then you basically try to find out the variance. Variance you have to find out considering the at point of time where you are trying to take the decision and if the variance is high or low, you will take a decision accordingly. So, higher variance means there is more uncertainty, lower the variance means there are less uncertainty and you will take your decision accordingly. Now, if you have to set a two different projects, we have to choose as I just mentioned one from that set the and, and then decide such that the net present value is maximum. For an investment either he or she can either select a firm based on the net present value that the particular firm, firm has taken or consider the project which results in maximum expansion of the efficient frontier. Efficient frontier is basically the set of all those projects or all those, those investment which gives you the maximum risk return framework. So, if I go back to the one of the graphs which was considered where different type of assets or, or investments were there. So, the efficient frontier or the frontier would be some sort of graph like this on the risk return framework where the boundary basically gives you the set of all the investments which are considering the risk and the return framework are of the best so called combination. So, any set of, of um, just let me any set of, of assets or projects which are in this yellow region would basically mean that considering the overall risk and return framework, they are not the best, but anyone which is on the red line is, is basically the best. So, these two selection criteria which I have just mentioned about trying to maximize the net present value and trying to expand, trying to find out the maximum efficient frontier would give you the same result. Now, if you remember uh, in the last class I did mention that we will start now doing the problem. So, what I will do is that first I will discuss a uh, very simple AHP problem just give you the solution techniques without going to the details. Then I will do a decision tree problem and then come to the concept of the decision tree problems and the utility theory and later on I will come into the concept of using the different type of financial concepts the IRR, rate of return, then what is the average rate of return and all these things in order to make a decision for a project. So, as mentioned if you remember and if you uh, uh, do 
uh, recollect the name that Satie was the Thomas L. Satie was the person who be, who proposed the concept of, of analytical hierarchy process, which is a part and parcel of analytical network process. We would not discuss in details is ANP, a but we will try to discuss AHP with this simple example. Application is done in group decision making process where there are groups and you are want to basically make a decision for the project. Project as I, as I mentioned need not be only building a dam, need not be only building a car, need not be only building say for example, a hospital, it can be different type of, of concepts. It can be like I am trying to hire uh, 10 different people and that I consider as a project and these 10 different people who are to be employed by my company should have different skill sets. Like considering some, some set of people would be there on a production uh, shop floor, some set of people would be there in design shop floor, somebody would, would be there in the marketing. So, I would have different criteria based on which I will take try to make a decision. So, th that can also be considered a project. So, I would not go into those, those detailed examples, but I will very simply consider this AHP where the group decision process making process is being considered as a, as a very qualitative way such that it gives you in a nutshell the conglomeration of all the decision process of different human beings may have. So, it has wide range of application exist like say, uh, like say for example, selecting a car for purchasing, deciding upon a place to visit for vacation, deciding upon the MBA programs, so all this can be decisions, projects, whatever it is to be considered. So, AHP algorithm is basically composed of two steps. The first step is determine the relative weights of the decision criteria based on which you will you will make a decision and determining the relative ranking or priorities all the alternatives such that the decision set of criteria which are there affect your total priorities or the alternative based on which you are trying to make a final decision. Consider this, this is the example which we will consider. You are uh, okay, let me let me give you two examples so that I am sure that will give give the the participants a much better flavor. Consider there is a student one, and uh, he his name is Ram, and consider Ram has been selected in one of the MBA programs um, in in somewhere in India. That's a good MBA program, and his brother is also there, Sham. He has also applied for an MBA program. So, consider in the first sense the result comes out for Ram. He has to choose one of the MBA programs and his choice decision set is, is different. Like he is very theoretical oriented, he wants to be a teacher, he does not want to go into the corporate field such that he will, he will now rank that MBA institute based on how rigorous the academic uh, schedule or ac academic curriculum is how good are the professors, how uh, say for example, he does not want to travel much. So, he will try to find out how far is it from his home, consider he stays in Mysore and just, just, just let us consider very simplistically. While Sham, as I mentioned, had applied, but he has not the, got the call. So, Ram would basically make his decision based on his criteria and he will rank different MBA institutes and take a decision accordingly. Now, consider after two or three weeks, Sham gets the call and now he gets the call from the same type of institutes where Ram has applied, but Sham's overall criteria or, or overall the, uh, basis based on which he will make a decision for selecting the name that college is totally different. He wants to go into the corporate, for him placement is a factor, for him the city is a factor because that should be one of the, should be there in one of the best metropolitan cities as that the placement uh, concept is taken care to the best possible extent. So, if you consider Ram and Shams overall outlook for, for making uh, a selecting an, an alternative, alternative is that which college they should go, their criteria are different. So, obviously, they will put different weights for them. Now, if you, if you try to understand the problem from the point of view of Ram and Shams parents, they have limited budget or say for example, they want to give the best benefit to both of them on equal scale. That means, they definitely want to take care of both the uh, son's aspiration, but obviously on the front that uh, they should not be too much too far off the, from the home or the cost factor is important for, for the parents. So, they can be different 
factors. So, when you try to consider this type of example, this is a very simple example, the concept of group decision making comes in the picture. Now, this example I would not highlight using the problem. So, the next this example which I am going to discuss is, is the problem which we will discuss. Consider a family wants to buy a car and there are different uh, the model of cars, the cars have different type of specification, cost is a factor or example say for example, color is a factor, fuel efficiency is a factor, what type of loans you can get that is a factor or what is the overall safety features of the car is a factor or say for example, what is the luxury features of the car that is a factor. So, based on different type of things, we will consider this simple example. So, note both qualitative and quantitative information can be compared by using informed judgment to derive the weights and make the decision accordingly. So, now the second problem which I just mentioned, objective is to select a car, the criteria are style, cost, fuel efficiency. Now, if you consider these three points style or the criteria of the style, cost, fuel economy, they are one hierarchy. So, your actual decision is to buy the car, what type of cars you will buy up, they depend basically depend on the three characteristics which is style, cost, fuel economy. Now, if you think that the first level of hierarchy which or the criteria can be broken into in secondary and tertiary one, then the problem would have like style would be can be broken up into, into how crash worthiness the car is or how good looking the car is. So, there would be two sub categories under style. Cost can be what is the overall cost of the car, what is the resale, resale value of the car. If the car is very good in the market, the second hand uh, market for that car is very good, obviously the resale value would be very high. Consider what is the fuel economy of the car. In that case, it may be possible that one car is diesel, another car is petrol or it may be possible that that one of the cars the the overall um, service factor or the service um, um, cost to maintain the car is very high. So, they can be different type of hierarchies then alternatives very simply are the Civic, I 20, Escort, Alto, they can be other cars also. So, what I mean by the criteria and the sub criteria is like this, your main decision is, is to buy the car and the first level or hierarchy are the criteria. So, I will just put the criteria as C 1. So, style is C 1, the next one cost is C 2 and the third one is C 3 which is fuel economy. So, when I mentioned about fuel economy or the cost or the depreciation value or the resale value, it actually means that it may be possible C 1 has different subcategories as C11, C12, C13, C14. Similarly, C2 can have different subcategories as C21, C22 and C3 considered it has only 3 which is 3, C31, C32 and C33. So, it can go into the secondary, tertiary and, 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 and so on and so forth. Now, at the end considering this is the end level of your hierarchy there all the alternatives would come. So, see for example, in this they would be A 1, A 2, A 3, A 4 at the last stage which is Civic, I 20, Escort, Alto and this conglomeration of such alternatives would be there under the ending of each and group. So, what you want to do is that or what you want to find out is that collectively combine each stream one at a time such that we are able to find out the overall cost and what is the best decision based on which the car can be bought. So, with this I will end the, the tenth lecture and continue with the example of the AHP such that uh, the, the students who are taking this course can understand how AHP can be utilized in any decision making or a project uh, framework problem. Thank you.